Okay guys, I got a fun one for you today. I broke the pivot off this French lifting wheel. And since I made it, I get to fix it. In this video, I'm gonna show you a technique for repivoting a hardened French wheel. And I'll begin by showing you just an overview of the process. The first thing I do is make a heat sink. Because it's hardened, I need to soften and anneal the pinion. I heat the brass rod until the pinion becomes blue, and then I let it cool slowly in the brass rod. In order to fit the wheel into my chuck, I have to make a brass adapter. Following this, I have to make a steady rest, which I make double-ended through my tool holder. One end is for the drill, and one end is for the arbor of the wheel. Here I have a double-ended pin vise, which I use to drill through the steady rest through the arbor of the wheel. And here I have the new pinion fitted to the wheel and ready for final shaping. And here it is in my drill press to show it true. And here I am enjoying the results as it spins freely between my plates. So let's do some clock repair. So this is the lifting wheel on the strike side of a French movement, which I broke this pivot. And it was a foolish mistake, but it does happen from time to time. And one of the things that my teacher taught me is that the difference between a master and a student is that the master can fix his own mistakes. So here is my Sherline lathe that I'm going to be using. And the first thing I do is set it up to make sure my tool is uh, on center using my tailstock dead center. Then um, here I am making a heat sink from a piece of brass rod. Because the wheel on the French movement, uh, the pivots are hardened. So I can't just drill a hole through the arbor like I normally would. I have to anneal the pinion so that it's soft and then I can drill through the material. So this brass rod will serve as my heat sink. So basically I drill a hole so that my pinion can fit in there like so. And then I'm gonna create a groove using my cutoff tool as shown here. All right, so now I got my heat sink in a vise. I'm gonna take my wheel and stick it in there, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply heat right here, not directly on the wheel or the pinion. I'm gonna apply heat right here until the pinion turns blue. And then when it does, I'm gonna take the heat off and then I'm gonna let it cool. To ensure that my material is soft enough to drill through, I'm going to take a file and see that it cuts. And it does. So that is an indication that I soften the material sufficiently so that when I go to drill through it, my drill will be able to cut it. All right. So in a stroke of genius, I came up with the idea of making this large extension to my arbor. So I drilled a hole in the brass rod and I broached it out just to be large enough so that I could press my arbor onto it. And then try to turn this in my lathe. Because of the lifting pins on this wheel, Without this extension, I wouldn't be able to fit my wheel into the chuck. Now I'm going to make a steady rest by drilling a hole through this aluminum tool holder I have. I'm going to drill a hole slightly larger than the diameter of the pinion. 
and I'm going to drill all the way through. Now I'm going to make sure I have a flat surface to drill on at the end of the former pivot by stoning the end. So I'm going to rotate my wheel in my steady rest and take my stone and carefully go back and forth to get a flat surface. Now because the pinion diameter is 2.91 millimeters at the largest area, I'm going to use my 297 reamer to go through the aluminum for my final cut on the steady rest. And that will also allow me to insert a 300 size bushing to uh, make a steady rest for my drill bit. So we're going to make a double steady rest here. All right, so I've got this practice plate here that I use to prepare bushings. And I've got labeled here different size bushings. Here's 300 size hole that I have. So I'm going to make a bushing within a bushing. So the uh, 300 size bushing will be pressed in first. And then what I'll do is I'll drill it out um, and then ream it out so I can fit a 200 size bushing inside the 300 size bushing because my drill bit is uh, very small for this procedure. I'm using a larger drill bit now, working my way up to the 290, or the 197 size reamer because the reamer is going to grab the material more and I don't want it to push out the bushing as I cut. <laughs> Okay, now we should be ready to put the reamer in there and make the final cut in my bushing here. Okay, now I've got my 300 size bushing in there and my it's reamed out for a 200 size bushing, so I'm going to chamfer both ends to remove any burrs. And we're gonna insert our 200 bushing so that the chamfer side is up. Like so. Okay, now I'm going to press this bushing out. There she is. Bit of a tight fit. So here's my steady rest. One end is for the drill. The other end is for my pinion, as shown here. So I'm going to put this in my lathe, and I'm going to true it up and put it on center at my chuck end, like so. And then what I'm going to do is take my drill that I'm going to use to cut my wheel with and drill through my bushing through the steady rest so that it's just large enough to fit my drill bit. As you can see coming out the other end, my drill bit will come through there. There we go. There she goes. And I'm gonna go until I can feel her butt up against my bushing. And then I'll just back it up a hair so that it spins free. 
but is also at the same time very close to the bushing. All right, we'll add some oil and then she'll spin nice and smooth in my steady rest. So now it's time to do the cutting. All right, so here's the setup. Take my pin vise with my larger uh, drill bit turned backwards, put in my tailstock. Then I'm gonna position with the front of my vise right there with my, where I made my cut for my hole. See there? Perfect. Now I'm going to tighten up my chuck and then back it off so this moves free. Okay. And actually I'm going to increase the length of my bearing surface on the back here so I have more, um, more room to go. So let me just do that. It's a tight fit here. Okay, let's put that in there first. And then we should be good. Okay. Tighten up my chuck here. Okay. That's too tight on my chuck, so I'm going to loosen it a bit. There, yeah, that's free moving. Okay, and I've got enough range in here to move forward to make my cut on my pinion. So we're going to do it by hand. We're going to use lots of oil, okay? So let's give this a shot. Using this technique of the double-ended pin vise with the tailstock as a sort of um, free-moving uh, center allows you to have more control on the cut and ensure that you have a hole that's on center in your arbor. And then all that remains is to press the new pivot into the hole that you drilled. And I like to secure it with uh, Loctite. So this is a setup you can use to drill a centered hole for new pivot on your French wheels. So I use Loctite 603 to secure the new pivot. And unfortunately, I forgot to record pressing in the new pivot into my wheel, but you can see it here. And then I put it in my press to make sure it's turning true. And it is. Okay, now I trim my pivot and I'm gonna polish it. All right, so here's the final result. Got my wheel between my plates. She's spinning great. Looks, sounds, and feels wonderful. So I hope you found this technique useful and I would appreciate any feedback. Whether good or bad, your comments are always welcome. And until next time, thanks for watching.